So we're looking at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Some here in our community have been commenting about some of the different aspects of the game that they would like to see, knowing now that the game has received a delay for maybe eight, nine months. We don't know. They said 2nd of February next year, but man, at this point, I'll believe it when I see it because this game has received a significant uh, you know, number of delays, either officially or unofficially. Now, the very first thing that I wanted to go ahead and highlight here for this video is that, you know, some people in our community have said perhaps if the game had some kind of a melee system, it would provide a little bit better perception for the game. To this, I actually do agree. But this video, we're going to be looking at the technical aspects of this. I think if we look at the technical aspects, then we'll see if at all it's a probability, a possibility or an improbability or maybe highly, uh, you know, leaning towards a part of impossible. I don't want to say impossible because you don't really know. So you just want to you know, move with the probabilities that you feel are higher and actually talk about the ones you think are lower. Now, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a shooter at its core. However, there is already melee combat that's actually embedded into the game with some of the characters. So this is where I would say we're no longer in the improbable side. We're looking at likely and probable for them to improve upon those melee mechanics and then have shooting as something of a complement to it. So the game is a shooter, but then you have the brawling that goes into things. So I think this is where there's a middle ground in the development cycle for the game and the development possibilities and so on and so forth. So the you know, concerns or I would say the suggestions from players and from gamers out there that are talking about maybe having some melee in this game is actually, in my opinion, something that is much more realistic than we think. The only challenges that we do face, I will highlight here in this video, and they are number one, the time to implement. Once a game is already functional to a specific extent, at that point, your build is set up Everything else that you're going to be doing for your game is pretty much polishing, optimizing, marketing, preparing all kinds of different dissemination of material. And a game like this, in my opinion, finishing DLC and end game content to make available when the game finally launches. I think these are the top priority of things right now that this game needs. If you were coming from a realistic perspective, let's just say they didn't have enough money, time or, you know, staff to go ahead and start making these changes. These are the things that need to be prioritized to give suicide squad at least at least a small edge and so the aspect of actually putting together the melee combat into the game or improving upon it is where i say yes it's you know kind of possible in a sense but you know dealing with these or this particular constraint right now which is basically time to develop i think it's something that the developers or maybe the publisher might want to actually deal with maybe have throwing in throw you know throw something like that in there maybe have a second build where they're making these modifications to see how this is all going to come into full effect and if at all it's going to be able to you know be playable at a specific time so that's just one side that you have to pay very close attention to that makes me say, yes, we're in the possibility and probability territory. The second side is very interesting, in my opinion, and that is how the enemy NPCs will also respond. So this is a technical side from a gameplay design perspective. So let's say you add a little bit more melee to Captain Boomerang and you maybe improve upon and even widen the you know arsenal of you know melee and a lot of the different different uh, combat mechanics for say King Shark and Harley and they can just go in there and they can brawl the question you have to ask yourself is how would you modify the AI in order for them to be responsive to this or to these new set of you know abilities that your characters now have this is a game design question that would have had to be answered from the onset of the game this is where I say our you know highly or our likely or probable is now moving to you know a side of improbable because this means you're going to have to redesign another aspect of the game so that the game doesn't feel like brain dead enemy npcs are all just running around and shooting you and now you have these new melee abilities because they're shooting you they're dealing damage with you what if they prevent you from closing in or what if you're not able to kind of build meter or build say you know your special ability criteria having that you know shot and you know destroyed other enemy npcs before you can get access to these kinds of you know melee abilities how are these things going to all be designed and gelled together within eight months we now face again the problem of having to put the developers in a place where they're pretty much redesigning their game and i think this is very interesting overall because these kinds of changes are changes that could be made in small increments as the game comes out 
So my best guess is they probably are going to be in a place where they balance things out, put a little bit of that, of this, a little bit of that, and make those things somewhat, uh, you know, at the forefront, like maybe a little bit more of these uh, melee skills or a little bit more of these abilities, put them at the front and center so that shooting is complementary, like I said, and then as they're adding more anti-heroes or heroes to the game, then that starts to kind of make sense where some of the heroes don't necessarily have to be in the category of using their saws and their pistols and sniper rifles and shotguns, which in a sense kind of almost wants to defeat the purpose of a shooter, but then they can mix it up and make it really wide and provide a little bit more variety for the gamers. Again, it boils down to having to, you know, be in this, you know, place where I would say that Rocksteady pretty much has made the wrong game for their audience. Uh, and it's not their fault. Again, I'm one of the few people that will tell you that these things are mandates that come from their you know, publisher. They tell them what games to make. They go ahead and make those games. And that's pretty much how it is that things are going to flow. Rocksteady does not work for itself. Warner Brothers pays the salaries for Rocksteady, owns Rocksteady, not even pays the salaries, owns the building, owns every single thing about that particular studio, except for maybe the employees who have free agency to choose where it is that they want to work and you know that's pretty much how it is or maybe some of them have you know all kinds of interesting ndas and contracts so at the moment they're there they have to pretty much be in a position where they're working for the you know overall goals that have been set for them and i think this is also very very interesting because not only has the game come this far where we've seen that you know a lot of it is online i've mentioned why i thought the online aspect was there for or simply there because that was one way they could be able to, in, in a sense, get performance out of the game. We've been talking about this whole 60 FPS and 30 FPS conversation. And I've you know been in this position where I've been telling a lot of folk here in our community that, guys, as much as I understand that a lot of people expect that there'll be 60 FPS in, in video games, the challenge that we're facing is whenever Microsoft and Sony advertised their 60 FPS uh, you know, contents to people, they were aware that not every game was going to meet this criteria. And they knew that, but they never said that to you know consumers. Because if you actually go and look at a few things, you're going to be very curious as to how this works. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here. So here's the box of your Xbox Series X. I wish I could find a box for the you know PlayStation 5, but nothing. This one is on Mercari. And on the box here, they wrote 4K 120 FPS. Now, here's the crazy thing. If you look very carefully at this box, on this side here, where I'm actually circling my cursor, you're going to see something that says... 4K Blu-ray, talks about 4K Blu-ray, and then in fine print, you can't even read it. It talks a little bit about 4K and 120 FPS. Now, here is exactly what it said. I went and got my Xbox box, and I typed it all out for you. It makes this 4K 120 FPS in fine print bold, and then it says, require supported content and display. Use on Xbox Series X as content becomes available. So when they were designing this particular box, or when they were about to market it and get it out the door, they were quite aware that many games were probably not going to be able to meet this criteria because the way these games are developed, they've you know been in a, a pipeline of development where they're running at 30 FPS in many cases. So to port your game to give you that 4K resolution and to give you that higher frame rate requires basically a redevelopment of a lot of things like assets, possibly rewriting code, possibly tweaking your lighting or doing some kinds of you know weird artistic tweaks of shadows and so on and so forth. And if a game is destined to have a specific look, it's almost impossible for you to trade all of that to give your game a different identity just because of frame rates. One of them was Gotham Knights. This is the Joe Schumacher in my mind, you know, Gotham in its representation because of the lighting and everything. And I remember that, you know, at PlayStation Access, when they were talking about this game before it came out, they said that all the lighting in Gotham Knights was actually placed by hand. So every single lighting was designed to showcase Gotham in a specific light. And lighting eats performance. You, you, I mean, there's a, a whole Unreal Engine, uh, you know, developer conference where an Unreal Engine uh, engineer was actually teaching devs how to work on optimization. And there's a clear example of how lighting will eat your performance. And I think that's what hit Gotham Knights the most part in its open world because the lighting was designed as a core component of the game's visuals. So if they had to remove the lighting, then they'd have to maybe work on reflections and so on and so forth. And when the developer said, when Floor Marty said that our game doesn't have a 60 FPS performance mode because of the way we design 
designed it, a lot of people said that it's just crazy. But a lot of the people that said this, whenever I, you, you, know, you speak with them about game development, you get accusations of you being arrogant or accusations of you talking down to your audiences. I saw these comments today and I was quite shocked where that came from. I've always talked about game development here. And to be very honest, I'm all about truth. So if maybe the things I say, maybe as much as I can claim that they're factual, don't necessarily resonate, I'm not really concerned about how anybody feels because when people make fun of me about my claims, they don't, they're not concerned about how I feel. So it makes me go do my homework. It makes me dive more deeper into the knowledge base. And I'm not going to apologize for that. There's no way I'm going to do that because when you're on the internet, you really got to have tough skin. You got to take all the beating that you're going to take and use it to basically expand your knowledge and be you know, better versed in what it is you're looking at. And so I think with Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League, when you talk about a lot of these different concerns with the online only and that benefit of being able to run at higher frame rates, I think we do have a case for saying that this particular game, you know, is in just a really interesting spot. I mean, if you think about the online only, what if the online only is not necessarily just something that they've designed the game for, but like other developers have said, like in Ubisoft Massive, Frederick Thylander, who said that their game, The Division One, was designed as an online only game so that they could actually run AI on their server in Ubisoft and run the open world on your machine. So there's all kinds of different things in game development and the way developers build their games that if you try to actually take them out of the game the game is not necessarily going to you know it's not going to have its identity in a sense and believe it or not as much as i'm making this case the people who this hurts the most with the online only are the developers you know many people don't need, don't necessarily consider this the developers are not the publisher the developers are the people who apply for a job they train themselves they learn they go to university some of them they diy and learn and they get these jobs and work on a project and only for one day that project to risk being deleted from an online server. That is the worst thing ever because imagine if you worked on Marvel's Avengers and you tried to apply for a job like 15 years down the road. Anybody's going to be like, oh, you know, what, let me go play Marvel's Avengers. They can still play it because the game has an offline mode. But imagine if you worked on a game like Rumbleverse. I think that was a game that got deleted from its online servers. The game's gone. If you worked on a game like Paragon, the game's basically gone. Now, assets for Paragon exist, but for the most part, those games are gone. So your resume kind of sort of almost does not really exist in a sense so i think possibly the developers over at warner brothers montreal they probably saved themselves they saved their bacon by putting this game as an offline possible game where you can play the game offline with the online state for this game to have run at 60 fps on console i think this is my argument it would have fully been necessary to have it go in an online mode where you can now run and share the tasks so console players will get 60 FPS. And I understand console players, you said that, you know, most of you have said, you know, we're used to 60 FPS now. It's hard to go back. I get it. I play on both 60 FPS and 30 FPS. My argument here is that in this entire thing, this is a scientific fact. It doesn't really matter how we feel or what we're used to. The scientific fact is if a game can actually support 60 FPS or 4K 120, it would do it. If the game cannot do it, it's scientifically improbable in its state that it's designed in to do it, unless you change the state of the game, unless you go ahead and bring in, say, an entirely different paradigm of the game or a different game itself. And here is the Division 2. It's one game that's done it for many, many years, and you can run the game at 60 FPS. But by golly, you do not have an internet connection. You cannot play this game at all. And I have thousands of hours in this game. I can give you the lowdown of how a game leveraging the online aspect to you know, basically allow for improved gameplay actually is able to work and function and has been supported for over half a decade. So this is a very interesting conversation that, you know, once in a while, I like to touch it, even if we're discussing other subject matters and subject areas, because I think it's very important for gamers to be able to know. So these are a lot of considerations that you must put in perspective when you're looking at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And when you're looking at the possibility of the game, maybe losing the online aspect, or maybe the developers now moving to accentuate more of the melee combat. Basically, they have to change the AI. How is all this going to work with performance? These questions need to be answered or within their studios anyways, they need to be answered in our own right. We need to discuss them so that we can see where the probability is so that you know if you want to invest your time and your resources in playing this game at all. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.